Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about scan versus seek and what the two things mean when talking about data access operators in an execution plan, as well as something called sargability that factors into whether or not you can seek or scan. First, let's take a look at scans. Scans are what happens when SQL Server has to step through every row of whatever structure it's looking at. Now I say structure because it could be a temp table, an actual materialized permanent table, or an index that we're talking about. Whatever the case, a scan will read through each row of that, stepping on through to find what it's looking for. Now obviously, reading through every row, if you think about data access, is probably not the optimal way of doing things. If we want to minimize the footprint that our execution plan has, if we want to touch as few rows as possible, stepping through every row probably isn't the best way of doing that. But is it always the worst way of doing it? Well, not necessarily. There are times where scanning is the best way of going about it, and we'll look at that more in a little while. Whether scanning an index or a table you can imagine that the cost goes up as the structure gets larger because it's stepping through every row, and there's a big difference between stepping through 100 rows and stepping through 100 million rows, table or index. Now when I say that it's stepping through and reading data, it's easy to picture that as being some sort of cursor-like behavior. It really isn't. It's not walking through every row and doing something, but it is examining every row in the process of gathering data. So it's not as inefficient as a cursor might be, but it does make sure that it touches every row. Another important fact is that when a scan takes place, that means that SQL Server is unable to seek out individual rows as part of the whole set. It actually has to touch every row to find what it's looking for. Which brings us to a seek. A seek is when SQL Server is able to search for some condition in an index or a table and then only return the rows that match that condition. It's able to hunt down, say, where post type ID equals 2 or where last editor user ID equals 41071. It's able to specifically find those rows that match a condition and then bring stuff back. Because a seek depends on information being ordered, it kind of logically follows that you can't do a table seek. You can't do a heap seek because a heap, or and when you see it in an execution plan, a table is unordered and stuff could be anywhere. So there's no way to traverse all that without going from start to finish and touching every row. With a seek, say we're looking for display name, begins with Obi-Wan. If we were to search for that, we know that we can skip from A all the way up through OB something. And then once we've passed OB, we're never going to see Obi-Wan again because it's ordered. So that's what a seek can do. It can skip the first part, the last part, and just go for the stuff in between. The first way in that a seek is not necessarily better than a scan is when you look at the operators that get combined with the seek. There are times where doing an index seek plus a key lookup is actually worse than just doing a clustered index scan, doing one pass through the table and getting everything you need. The other instance where trying to replace a scan with a seek may not help is when it comes to predicates and search arguments that are not sargable, which of course brings us to sargability. Sargability is just a way of saying that search arguments can be evaluated efficiently in SQL Server. Sarg is just a mashup of the word search and arguments. An easy way of illustrating this is to say, let's look through our Stack Overflow database, specifically the users table, and I want to find out how many geeks out there are rocking the display name Obi-Wan. I don't care if it's Obi-Wan Kenobi or Club Obi-Wan or whatever, but I want to find out how many people have Obi-Wan as part of their display name. So I'd write a query like this. I would select some information from the DBO users table 
And because I'm not really sure where in their display name the string Obi-Wan might come from, I'll say like percent Obi-Wan percent. And that will tell me if it falls anywhere in their display name. Now, if you were to take all of the different ways you could order the data in the user's table, would having that ordered data help? Yes or no? Probably not, because if you were to look for the string somewhere, it wouldn't matter what order our display names are in, because that string could be the first characters or the last characters, and having it ordered won't matter. This is what happens when something is not sargable, when the search argument that you're trying to match against is not something that can be assisted by having any sort of ordered structure. Now, there is one way around this, but it's utterly ludicrous and will not scale. What you could do is create a computed column that basically says, has Obi-Wan, yes or no, go through, evaluate all this stuff, create an index on it, and that way you can easily reference if someone has Obi-Wan. But you can see that if you're going to be searching on different strings in this display name column, how quickly that model falls apart. Let's revise our example just a little bit and see if this helps. Instead of doing a search on like percent Obi-Wan percent, where we're basically saying that Obi-Wan could fall anywhere inside the display name, what if we said that this Obi-Wan has to be at the beginning of the display name? Now let's think about that question again. If we were to order the results of all the display names that we have in the DBO users table, would that order help us find things that begin with Obi-Wan? Yeah, it probably would. So we can say that in this case, what we are passing in is sargable. Some other examples of things that are not sargable include where, say, we wanted to do Obi-Wan, but instead we express that as left display name three characters equals Obi. That's not going to work. That's not going to be sargable because SQL Server has to do some thinking about that. It can't just directly compare the two. Other stuff that won't fly, where maybe the year of the creation date is 2013. That's another thing that SQL Server has to do additional thinking about, and it can't just compare A to A or A to B. Another one that won't work is if we do upper. Pretty much any kind of string conversion is going to mess up SQL Server's ability to do a direct comparison between what you want and what it's looking at in the table. So this is why if we're looking to turn scans into seeks, it might not always pay off to do that. We might just have to accept that whatever our query pattern is, that's not sargable, and we're going to have to just live with the fact that it won't be efficient. And like I said, in extreme edge cases, you may decide that something like a computed column will help, but again, be very careful if you try to go down that road because it's something that absolutely will not scale. Now that we've talked a little bit about scans and seeks, we'll start looking at the operators that involve scans and seeks and what they mean in your execution plan.